Well, this one's in office. How are you, sir? Good, thanks. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I've been reading Good. a little bit about your amazing um, structures, yeah. and I think it's so exciting. Yeah, I've been doing this for 28 years now. Oh, my gosh. Well, I want to hear so this one the on history. A, on a stand. So it's portable. It comes apart like IKEA furniture. And uh, I've got a special trailer made so I can put the stand on a trailer and a screw behind it on the truck. And you can have a traveling through it. <laughs> Who needs to be a billionaire and go outer space, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. And they each have a name. Yes. I always put the name in the outside door handle. All right. See, this is Gwen. Okay. Hello, Gwen. And what is it made of? What's the uh, fiberglass? This is a fiberglass. Oh my yeah. gosh. I've got a couple of wood ones. Ooh, I love. It has movement. Yes, we embrace that concept of movement. This is two wooden ones, and then this was my original sphere, Eve. We call it. You know, named after the first Eve. woman. <laughs> And uh, that was Aaron, the second one I did. So Aaron became the plug for the mold. I took a uh, fiberglass cast of that. And so all of these other ones, like Melody and this one, and all the other shells are exact replicas of that one, basically. Oh this gosh. is Aaron inside. This is Melody inside. This is a Murphy bed. It folds up against the back wall. This is so amazing. So, since we're in a dry spot right here, can you share with us um, your origin, your concept? How did this all come about? Well, it was an idea that was... I've always been a big fan of tree houses. And this type of tree house was... I call it modular because I completely finish them in the shop. When they come out of the shop, they're ready to go into the forest. And it's just a matter of swinging it on the end of a rope or you can fly it in with a helicopter. So when you put it out in the forest, there's no construction project in the forest because now I'm stuck. You know, like this is a lot of these designs or ideas are, you know, copied from the sailboat industry. So the windows do open and close. Um, since you can't go out and buy window hardware for a sphere window anywhere, you know, I have to make this stuff. So when I made the patterns, I curved in rooms and, and Celtic rope work, you know, just... And what kind of... Rope? Celtic? Celtic. Celtic. Celtic, okay. Well, they're beautiful. I love your pattern, your designs on them. Yeah, well, that's the thing. When you make your own stuff, you can jazz it up. <laughs> I don't know why they would ever put a plain Jane hinge on it, to tell the truth. They didn't for a design, if you ask me. And tell me about the ceiling, Tom. That's a uh, Triscoll. I'm sorry? A Triscoll. Again, it's a Celtic design. Triscoll. And what type of wood? That's black walnut. Everything in here is American black walnut. Why American black walnut? It's a nice wood to work with. It's quite valued, highly valued, I what my mother used to tell me. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. We did black walnut here, and I'll show you the, some of the spheres. I've used a little bit of western black walnut, but again, it's like the, the west coast maple. There's just right. so uh, such an abundance of moisture here all the time that 
you know, the growth of a tree isn't limited by moisture like it is in the east. It's beautiful. Love your office. I do feel like I'm in a boat. Now this, when you turn the handle, it pulls all the pins. So to close the door, you just pull it in the hole and it snaps shut. And then open it and just turn the handle a little bit like that. So, Are you an engineer? Yeah. I started out in life as a biologist. So, yeah. That is such a beautiful artwork. Oh my God. This one is only nine feet in diameter. That's so it's, okay. uh, it's a small sphere. But it was a proof of concept, the first one I ever built. So I had to learn how to build a sphere first. And I kind of spent the last 20 years finding interiors. And so the, the, the design, the structure itself, why a sphere? Because the skin is a structural member thing. If you look at it, look at a ping pong ball, you know? Right. There's no elaborate framework inside to give it strength. It's just the skin is a structural member. And you know, you keep the skin light and tough, and it takes an enormous amount of abuse, you know. You whack a ping pong bottle as hard as you can with a paddle and boom, it just goes, you know. So, and when basically what, that's the way a sphere reacts to a stress, you know. When you hit something on the outside of it, it distributes that stress over the skin. And it, it'll bend a little bit and then it absorbs the stress. And then if you tether it from stretchy ropes, well then, normally what happens is if you've got a rigid building, you know, and you, you, a tree falls on it and hits it, you get a stress spike that looks like that, because it all happens in a millisecond. The energy is transferred from the heavy tree to the, the building and the nothing moves, and boom, it has this enormous amount of stress, and it fails. You know, the roof is going to crack or there'll be a big hole in it or something else. Now, if you take a sphere and you tether it, you hang it from elastic ropes and a tree falls down and hits it, it's going to first of all start to move. The ropes will stretch and they'll move and they'll allow the tree to pass through. And you get a stress hill that looks like that instead of a big stress spike with a failure point on it. So you can accommodate the stress by allowing it to move with the impact and absorb the, the energy over a much longer period of time. So that's engineering. That's the engineering. But that's, you know, it's a beautiful explanation. Nice Thank light. you so that they've got a tough skin and they're nice and light, they're easy to move, you know, they're not real heavy objects or anything. So anyway, this was the proof of concept. We hung that around five different places before I built the second one. And, and that's and, the second one. It was a foot and a half bigger in diameter, but that's, you know, a foot and a half cube, basically. So you get probably 40% more volume. I can see the difference just standing here. Mm -hmm. And then once I built the shell of Aaron, I took a fiberglass cast off. So all of these fiberglass ones, like that lime green one and the wooden one, the brown one and the brown one in the office, are all replicas of this. Yeah. And this structure I'm looking at right now, the with the three poles, is oh, that? That's another stand. Okay. Similar to the stand the office. Is on. That we were just in. Yeah. It's a tripod, basically. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the ancient druids used to hold all the rituals in, in a grove, a triangle of trees. I didn't know and that. They called it a sacred grove. Oh my God. And it, the grove would have the flavor of whatever trees made up the triangle, basically. <laughs> So, did it take you long to find this plot of land to build on? Oh, uh, we're still looking, to tell you the truth. We just wrote this land, like I said. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we've been 16 years on this land. So, 
How many? How many acres? It's five acres. This palm takes up almost the full acre. Well, if you move, where will you move to? Well, it'd be nice to be over on the mainland. So that we didn't have to do the ferry all the time. But it was windy last night. Oh, I know. That I know. Oh my God, is this another outhouse? Yeah. <laughs> I've been experimenting with outhouses too. <laughs> this, this is another little... Oh, I am definitely a mushroom country because I'm at the farmer's market. I met a gentleman who started a mushroom business. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is beautiful. And why, I mean, just for to be whimsical, is that? Try to blend into the forest a little better. And it's actually a system. <clears throat> I put composting toilets in them. With sand? Is it with? No, I use an electric composting toilet. It's okay. actually got a fan and a, a pipe that goes way up into the canopy so that you don't smell the toilet down here. This one's gone south on me, so I'm just drying it out right now. Okay. And, uh, Again, it's made with cedar uh, cedar shingles? Cedar, yeah. But the roof, I got a little crane truck and I can take the roof off and I can reach in and I can take that composting <laughs> toilet out and exchange it for another one. Because when a composting toilet goes south on you, you know, it's an ugly thing to work on. You know, you've got this whole drum full of, you know, semi-liquid shit basically <laughs> and it's nice if you can dry them out before you can either go to work on them or you know, you know, with them. all right our journey continues hey, this is new one. now this one is actually hanging from a tree and this one well, is which one this is melody hello melody oh my god and that melody that wraps around it is actually beethoven's ninth it's the ode to joy This one has a Murphy bed. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it has a what? A Murphy bed. Oh, okay. The bed hides up against the back wall. Now these tables just fold down out of the bottom of the Murphy bed. And there's another table over here. Oh, and so you could have two little workstations if you wanted in here. And it just folds down like that. And then at night, when you're ready to go to bed, you uh, keep the Murphy bed legs out, go the ottoman over a little bit, and... Voila! Yeah. <laughs> now the bed is all made up underneath. I just, it's a cover to keep the dirt off, so we just... Ingenious. And they can seal the cover up and the bed's all made up when they're ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Ingenious. It's always, the idea was always to hang in the center of a triangle of trees. Like I was saying, the good sacred grove. Okay. So there's three attachment points. This is one, the back of the 
And then there's another attachment point back there and another attachment point back there, which joins it to each of the same strings that carry the load, basically. And if you think of a three-legged stool, it's like a three-legged stool in reverse, you know. Three-legged stool will find its own field of force. A unicorn in a field of forces. I love it. How whimsical. Okay, and this na the name of this? This is Luna. Luna. Luna is basically the latest design. So, how different is this? And Melody? And Melody. Well, it optimizes, well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you know, work within a sphere. And since nobody's designed any interiors in spheres, there's not a lot of you know, experimentation that you can follow the elements to do it out. So this one, I tried, tried to put the bed up against the ceiling. Now this is daytime. The bed is down. Or sorry, this is nighttime mode. So that's how you get up to bed level. And the bed is right down at the equator and whack your furniture with it and beat the hell out of the furniture. Let's see what it is. And what is this? What type of wood is this? This is American black walnut too. Still? Okay. I got a couple of spheres that I used. And then this. In the daytime, when you want to get rid of the bed, you just push the button. And there's a couple of hydraulic cylinders that put the bed up against the ceiling. And then, you know, like Melody had the Murphy bed that closed up and you lost all this room at the back side of the sphere. They have what? Custom? Custom heat exchangers. exchangers which is? A heat recovery ventilator, an air conditioning engineer would call it, an HRV. Um, what an HRV does is it passively exchanges the air and it recovers the heat out of the exhaust air that's going out. Because you, when you've got a couple staying in here, and usually we cater to couples, they're respiring. You know, they're putting a lot of moisture in the air because mm. they're breathing and there's moisture in their breath. And if they boil a kettle to make coffee or tea or hot chocolate or whatever, there's more moisture. So. Human habitation, especially in a tiny space, like you know, your car. You sleep in your car, you get up in the morning, it's a running river of condensation everywhere. You know, the walls, the doors, ceiling, windows. Well, by putting a, a passive heat exchanger in here, all it's got is two fans and a core, and it takes that moisture laden air off the inside and it's sending it out to the exhaust stream. And the inlet stream is coming on the other side of the heat exchanger membrane and it transfers the energy. So the exhaust air that's going out is full of moisture and it's full of energy. And the incoming air is cold, it's dry, relatively dry compared to the outside air. And when you exchange, transfer the energy from the outflow of exhaust air to the incoming fresh air, it warms it up and then it also lowers the relative humidity down to almost nothing so that it doesn't sweat and it doesn't condense on the windows. And where, uh, where does the air come in and out? Yes, if, where... When we go down below, you'll see there's a couple of uh, little grilled openings on the bottom of the sphere. One of them's for inlet air and the other one's for outlet air. Okay, that is brilliant though. Yeah, there's also a hydraulic pump under the floor. The heat exchanger takes up, there's a big two by two compartment under the floor. The heat exchanger takes up one side of it and the hydraulic unit for the bed takes up the other side. And then this is just, there's down underneath the sink here, there's my electronic compartment. That's where all the controls reside. And the hydraulic cylinders that actually move the bed up and down are right in behind these. Couple of shafts. 
busy for most of the it's beautiful. mechanical systems are tucked away, hidden, so that you don't see them. It's beautiful. These are works of art. Thank you. They truly are works of labor, of love, and creative works of art. I've never seen anything like these. I know, this is the only place you're going to see them. <laughs> so far. Wow. People are always wondering about, you know, how does the whole concept work? Well, you take three fees and you spread the load evenly off of three fees. And this platform here, I've got strain gauges. So, well, let's back up. Each of these trees that's supporting the sphere, I actually, where the attachment points for the sphere come on, on the back side of the tree, I'll put a couple of other lines that'll go from the same point on the tree out to the roots of the tree further out. So I'll do one here and another one over there. And so again, you've got that three point stabilizing. And what that does is it prevents this tree from, it damps the movement of the tree in a big wind. So like unrestrained, that tree is gonna oscillate back and forth and it'll have a big oscillation period. And if you get a big gust of wind at just the wrong time, that's when, you know, it catches the sail, the canopy of the tree is going to grab the wind and there's a big long lever and it pulls the roots up and boom, over goes the tree. But by damping it so that it doesn't have that big oscillation period, I only let it move a little bit because as soon as the ropes pull tight, it quits moving, you know, and it's going to go back the other way. And so that stabilizes the tree. And if I've got another tree out here, it might fall through my web. I'll put a rope on it and I'll tie it to the roots of the tree further out so that if it breaks off, it's going to be deflected. It's not going to come through the web. So I don't have to chop anything down really. I just work with what's there and I stabilize it with ropes. And I spin this web of rope around. It's going to secure my sphere and subdue the trees so that they don't have that range of motion. You're working in partnership with nature? Exactly. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And if you want to strain test everything, I can open these up and I can put my strain gauges in here. And the strain gauge actually measures the load. And that sends a signal to a computer so that I can put barrels of water on here and put the empty barrels on there and I can put a hose in and I can slowly fill them up with water from the pond or whatever. And I can put 10,000 pounds of strain on that, you know, so that I've got a good safety factor. I know if it'll hold 10,000 pounds, it'll hold the weight of a couple of human beings and the baggage and everything else, you know. And not only that, but when I've got my strain gauges hooked up there, if a big windstorm comes along, I can I can record what kind of transient movement, you know, and loads I'm getting on my strain gauges, even through a storm cycle. And I mean, it's pretty steady, you know, like the normal load would be about 800 pounds per tether. And you can, when you look at a chart of a storm cycle, you know, when you get a big gust of wind and the trees move apart, like if these two trees move apart in the wind, it puts just a tiny little vertical acceleration on them. So now, anyone 800 inside... 800 pound load might come up to 950, 975 even. Anyone staying in inside would have an adventurous ride. It would, <laughs> yeah. And it all really depends on the geometry of the grove. If these uh -huh. trees are further apart, then the tethers get a little more shallow and you get a lot more movement when the tethers get apart. Oh, gosh.